Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue our series of ultra budget decks. These are the decks that will not require you to spend a single rare or mythic to put together. What? Did you say? That's right. So once again, we will continue the series with a deck going into Rakdos Colors, a deck that I am calling basically Blood. Hmm, that's odd. Usually the blood gets off at the second floor. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our basically blood deck is, as I mentioned earlier, Rakdos colors. So that means you're going to be using black and red. Your average mana curve is about 2.1, and you'll be rocking 20 creatures, 8 instants, 4 sorceries, 4 artifacts, four enchantments, and only 20 lands. In all honesty, there's a ton of Rakdos Sacrifice variants out there, but the one we wanted to build today, I wanted to really focus on something that was a little bit more unique and not just the same old, same old of Cat Oven Combo. In fact, we actually just did a Cat Oven Combo for our last Basically deck, so I didn't really want to tread that ground again. Instead, as the video name suggests, we're going to be taking advantage of a ton of blood tokens and sacrificing them all for value. So, in order to do that, we're going to talk about first our creatures in the deck and then go over the support package. So, starting with the one-drop slot, you have Voldren Epicure. It just enters the battlefield, pings our opponent, and then creates a blood token. In the two-drop slot, we're going to be taking advantage of Blood Tithe Harvester. I'm sure many of you who do play Standard out there know this card all too well. It enters the battlefield, creates a blood token, but you could sacrifice the Harvester if you need to to then give a little bit of pseudo-removal against an opponent's creature. We also are going to highlight here one of our actual really awesome cards, which is going to be Restless Bloodseeker. So let's talk about this card for just a moment here. This is a 1-3 vampire that has 2 mana, and it says, at the beginning of your end step, if you gain life this turn, you create a blood token. You can sacrifice 2 blood tokens and transform the rest of this blood seeker, but you can only do this at sorcery speed. If you do transform it, it confirms into blood soaked reveler. So this is now a 3-3 vampire where it says at the beginning of your end step, you also can create a blood token if you gain life this turn. Also, for 5 mana, you can then ping your opponent down by draining him for 2, and you gain 2 life. Whew, I will definitely say, commons and uncommons have definitely come a long way in terms of power creep, so this is really a solid card for us because, again, we can take advantage of the fact that it can then transform itself to become more powerful, we can then drain our opponent out in the mid to late game with its ability if we transform it, and even if we don't, the fact that it can create blood tokens for us will really help our game plan create a small pseudo engine. In the three drop slot, we also are going to take advantage of Mayhem Devil. I absolutely love this card, and it is a menacing card for what it does. It just basically allows us to ping any target as long as any player sacrifices a permanent. So whether our opponent does their sacrificing with fetch lands, whether, again, they sacrifice their own stuff for value, our devil will punish them, and it's hilarious when this card goes off. The other card that most people probably only think of as Draft Chap, but is great for our deck, is going to be Gluttonous Guest. It creates a blood token when it enters the battlefield, but anytime we sacrifice a blood token, you gain one life. So remember how I just talked about right now the Blood Seeker? It'll create a blood token anytime we gain life. So even if we gain one life from, say, sacrificing one of our blood tokens with Gluttonous Guest, we gain that life, then we can create another token with the Blood Seeker, and also if we have it on the field, you can also start pinging with Mayhem Devil. So it's a really cute little synergy for us that helps us, again, churn out everything. Circling back over to the one-drop slot, we're now going to talk about our actual support pieces. So we have Removal with Annihilating Glare, does the maximum amount of damage with only the minimal amount of advancement, as long as we sacrifice maybe some one of our blood tokens to take out a creature or Planeswalker. We also have an Instant Meet if we need to in a pinch, going to be Torch the Tower here. Similar to, again, it just does two damage to a creature or Planeswalker, and also we can exile that instead if it does get removed. But I Ideally, if we can bark and say one of our blood tokens, we can also do three damage instead and also scry one. In the two drop slot, we'll also take advantage of Oni Cult Anvil. Let's talk about this card for just a second here because it is a really awesome engine piece for what this deck is trying to do. Oni Cult Anvil is a two mana Rakdos colored artifact that just reads, whenever one or more artifacts you control leaves the battlefield during your turn, you create a 1-1 one -one colorless construct artifact creature token. This ability only triggers once each turn. However, you can tap it and sacrifice an artifact to then ping your opponent for one damage and then you gain one life. So as you can see, just from that alone, that's why we definitely want this in the deck. So with this card, you can then take advantage of some of those extra blood tokens you have to then trigger off cards like Gluttonous Guest or Mayhem Devil or even Restless Bloodseeker here just to do a little extra damage, maybe gain some life, or just ping out certain things to get them off the battlefield. 
Your other support piece in the two drop slot is going to be the one and only Deadly Spew. I'm super high on this card, and as always, I highly recommend it anytime you are playing a sacrifice deck. You basically can sacrifice an artifact or creature to draw two cards and create a treasure token for more ramp. And then finally, in the four drop slot here is going to be a little bit of extra spice here to help close out your games. It's going to be Torment of Scarabs. This is an aura course that I'll talk about for a moment here. It's basically an enchant player option where at the beginning of an enchanted player's upkeep, they have to lose three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. So... Even just having one copy of this out will eventually be able to take out our opponent here as you will slowly see them wither away while we can then take advantage of just stripping them of resources. As far as your land base is concerned, this is going to be as simple as can be because again, we are a budget deck so we're going to have to adhere to that. We have some swamps, we have some mountains, we have foreboding ruins here. In paper, this is a rare, but we're going to take advantage of the fact that on arena, it is an uncommon, so that does count for us. And then finally, Riveter's Overlook is actually pretty good, not only for filtering our deck, but it will trigger off both Mayhem Devil, and it will trigger off also Restless Bloodseeker. If you do want to take this into best of three, here's going to be your best sideboard options for you. You'll have Duress here, as always, it's going to be great for discard. You'll also take advantage of Vampire's Vengeance here. Since we have quite a few vampires in the deck, this is actually going to be some great little mini Wrath here. Also leaves behind a Blood Token, which is synergistic for our deck. You have a couple copies of Fatal Push here. If you need something a little bit more instant speed, maybe you can remove your Annihilating Glares. You also have some Graveyard Hate with Soul Guy Lander here. Really awesome for the deck, and also you can sacrifice it for value if you absolutely have to in a pinch. A Feed the Swarm is primarily used here for enchantment removal. Same with the Abrade. It's mostly going to be artifact removal. You can utilize, however, each of these cards for creatures if you need to in a pinch. And then finally, in the end, is going to be Elspeth's Nightmare here, which is going to be a little bit more of a catch-all, which will help you encompass, of course, removal, some discard, and of course, Graveyard Hate all rolled into one. With that out of the way, here are going to be, again, the tips and tricks I would give you to pilot this deck and get the most out of it. Obviously, in the early game, get as many blood tokens as you can out onto the field. Your one and two three drops that can pull this off will be, of course, your Epicure, the Harvester, and Gluttonous Guest. These will create all those blood tokens you need to then start pulling off your fun shenanigans. The other major advantage of the deck is how versatile it is. So, as I mentioned earlier, by sacrificing all of these for value, you can get a ton of different triggers off. You can either ping down creatures with Mayhem Devil or even go to face. You can get a bunch of life aft with Gluttonous guess that life gain will also go back into restless bloodseeker which will create you more tokens for them to utilize later on your deadly dispute will help you draw a lot more faster and also will give you some pseudo ramp with the treasure token it leaves behind if you need to then take out certain creatures remember that torch tower is great in the early to mid game and then for the mid to late game annihilating glare might be your better option if you have to deal with bigger threats that maybe your smaller creatures just can't handle speaking of creatures oni cult and Volk will help you kind of go wide if you have to very slowly though but with those constructs you can then also take advantage of the fact that they can chump block or you can even sacrifice one of them maybe on the next turn after you've created your first one to then kind of create a never-ending engine of chump blockers which also again will trigger off cards like gluttonous guest and mayhem devil if you can get into the late game, a Torment of Scarabs to then resolve against your opponent, you will win the game very, very quickly. Most opponents do not want to lose their non-land permanence and discard, so most likely they're going to start, start choosing to drain themselves out before they start losing resources. Of course, the biggest disadvantage of the deck is if your opponent can exile any of your key pieces, such as your Mayhem Devil or your Oni Cult Anvil, that's where it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. Not to mention if your opponent has a lot of life gain or just creatures that are so big that only your Annihilating Glare can do only so much against him, that's where the deck is going to struggle quite a bit, so just keep those things in mind. If they can also counterspell, say, like your Torment of Scarabs, or your key cards like that Devil, or even the Gluttonous Guest, that's also where things are going to be a little bit of frustration for you, so just keep those in mind with this deck, but even so, the best thing I'm just going to recommend again is, with the amount of Blood Tokens you have, you will have a ton of different ways to kind of adjust your game plan, depending on what your opponent is throwing at you. Now, having said all that, if you are interested in, of course, taking this deck to the next level, as always, I will show you on screen right now, there are a ton of different variants of Rakdos Sacrifice, so take your pick of any which variant you want, regardless of whichever budget you are on. There's more than enough options out there for you to kind of play around with it if you like more of the artifact side of it, or if you just like straight up sacrifice, I assure you there's more than what you see on screen right now. So play around with it and you'll find something I'm sure that will work perfectly for your style. But with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. In terms of all of the decks I've built, this is actually going to be my personal pick for my favorite one than the one I would probably recommend the most out of any of our other deck decks. Not to say that the other ones are bad, but this 
this one honestly is a little bit more into with my style of gameplay and something that I really had fun putting together for you. In other words, if you are a fan of sacrifice decks, if you are a fan of taking advantage of some of the tokens that you can build to make a ton of extra value, and if you are a fan of versatile gameplay where you can either be super aggro or super grindy, then I would definitely say give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to make a ton of different blood tokens out there to then take advantage of the value they provide to either ping out your opponent, to life gain and drain them, and then strip them of all the resources, you'll have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at what this deck is capable of and you will definitely not be disappointed that's all i have for you today thanks again for watching everyone and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life always be sure to burn bright later